And good morning, everybody. Uh, David Cross with you this morning. Uh, I had some thoughts last night as I was looking through some of my um, PowerShell scripts and IP addresses of a way to uh, export data directly into Excel. Uh, so being able to take some of the queries out of IP control, uh, do some maybe subnet queries, then go get all the IP addresses, then maybe do some things with it, and then effectively take all the exports. And you know, I found a way to do that and through a module that's available called import uh, Excel, uh, one word. And as administrator, you can install that within your PowerShell script and get some uh, information about it. So let's do this real quick. And with this Excel import, there's also an export Excel. And the export Excel is, takes a table effectively or any kind of object and expands it out into its Excel format and creates an XLSX file. Um, well, I also found that this is also cross-platform capable too. So I had some interesting things that I started working with this morning. So anyway, along the lines with that export um, capability, I started looking back at some of my DNS statistics. Um, I use PowerShell a lot and I have some other videos I use with Node-RED and some other things. Well, with the PowerShell uh, and now this export Excel, it kind of helps me take a step further and one of the little private projects I'm working on with my Raspberry Pi. And uh, many, <laughs> about two, three years ago, I started on these projects. And um, I currently have this Raspberry Pi running DNS, another one running DHCP. So I've got a lot of things running on it. And I acquired a new Pi 4, which is a, a four gig quad core uh, little pocket PC. So I've got that running now my DNS. And I, I've, right now I'm, I'm thrilled about the performance. Everything is really great. And I can now start working with my programs, which is what I'm looking at. So to get to the point of all of this, um, DNS, uh, going back to the DNS statistics and understanding the behavior of your server so that you can start analyzing the stats in some way that's presentable, either through graphs or the ability to take a look at specific uh, types of statistics and then generate results or reactions, I guess, based on if you see some values that are extremely high or that you might be differencing across the, the times that you're scanning. So what I've uh, effectively wanted to do is take a look at the statistics channel. So with our bind DNS and with any uh, ISC bind that's compiled with the live XML, you can expose the st uh, statistics channel, which is an HTML web page allows you to access the stats of the server and uh, does that in real time. So whatever is currently in that statistics of memory. So the channel looks uh, specifically like this in your bind. You just have to make sure you have live XML. If not, that'll uh, crash your server, so be careful here. But in this, when it's configured, this basically sets up what IP address you're going to listen to, the port, and then you can set up any access controls. Now, in my lab, I'm, I'm letting anybody here, but I would probably have an access control with IP addresses um, that would be permitted to do this. Okay. Now, once that's enabled, what that exposes then is it exposes a web capability or a web function that has these statistics. So if I were to go out and uh, let's say just run this command, what I get back from the statistics channel is an XML, um, an XML file effectively or XML object that I can then start navigating through by looking through the dot statistic and then down into things like the server, uh, getting stats and counters uh, all the way down into the individual types. Uh, which here I might do, you know, show me all the opcodes and then the counters for those. So as you can see, we can get down into some very specific counters and also do things like looking at views, uh, extract zones that are currently being monitored with the zone statistics and others. So I thought, well, that's great. And with the XML capability and the, the simple way to load it, just using an XML type, this PowerShell will automatically do the conversion for you. So by far the easiest way I've, I've seen <laughs> to date of exposing XML. So, so what I've done in this a really simple script that I wanted to show you is just having it extract the XML and I'm pulling out a couple of counters uh, specifically that I want to have in this uh, output that I'm extracting, okay, going out to the export XML. And in the command sequence then, what I'm doing at the last part of this is I'm setting a date format, which is going to be used to name the table or worksheet names. So effectively in this export is when you use the same file name, you can then have the data from these objects 
either overwrite what's in that file, just specifying the defaults, or you can start to create some start row and column syntax, which in the end I found using the table syntax of this allowed me to generate some nice little snapshots, nice little tables within my Excel spreadsheet automatically that I now can start working on a uh, kind of a portal that gives me all of the stats in an instant that's run every hour that I can then have each hour represented within a single tab. So all throughout the day, uh, I plan to set up a cron, which is going to generate 24 tabs, one for each hour, showing me the stats and the zones and things in those counters. So I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I can make a nice little dashboard of this. And then using the PowerShell functionality, if I'm in the Windows, I can just invoke the spreadsheet, telling it to run it. Um, or I can go ahead and just, uh, you know, save it out to file and read it later. So I thought, well, that's kind of cool. So I'll show you a real quick example of that. Um, in my uh, virtual system here, it takes just a second to, to do this. Now, I thought that's really great. And on the flip side of this, you can also do import Excel, meaning that I could go in and import one of these files, read a specific worksheet or name or tab, the data, and then process the data further. So I'm, this has got me thinking about how I can do some you know, kind of little portals with this and snapshots. And then as you see, it just kind of appends it to the list of the, the data. So I'm gonna go back and make a you know change of this and see what I can do with it. Uh, but I also wanted to show you on the Linux side because in the PowerShell core, uh, you can run these same things. So these same commands are available and you can install that uh, import Excel module so you have cross-platform capabilities. And over here, we can do the same functionality. If I wanted to run that program, I could just do my DNS stats. And this will run, pull the stats, generate the XLS, the tab, and then it just continues. So very simple and it works cross-platform. But what I also did is set up a cron, and here's that cron example that shows you every hour I want this to run. And in this case, it initiates the PowerShell uh, shell, and then it tells it to launch the file, which in this case is my stats, PL. So this is going to run every hour, and I'm going to have at the end of the day, I hope, that 24-tab spreadsheet again. So uh, for the DNS admins out there, for security engineers, you guys uh, take a look at the, the stats capability of your servers. Take a look at the PowerShell capability to navigate to effectively find the data you need to have, you know, like server fails or, you know, what would you look at in terms of statistics to determine levels of uh, intrusion? You know, what counter specifically will we look at for that? So there's some uh, things you can look at, and I think it's worth taking a, you know, uh, take a check into it and see what it looks like in your environment and if you have that capability listed out. All right, so if you have any questions, uh, leave me a comment, and I'll be more than happy to help you with anything, and um, good luck. <laughs> and if I get this uh, finished up, I'll come back and show you this finished project, and we'll take a look at it again, and um, I appreciate it. Take care, have a great day, and uh, see you in a bit.